Um, my name is uh, Nam Nguyen. You can tell that I live in Australia for in the last 10 years, but I was born and grew up in Vietnam. So uh, Nam from Vietnam, I hope that's not so hard for you to remember my name. And I try to remember some of the names as we go along. Um, at the moment, I'm working um, with a company in Switzerland called Malik. It's one of the leading companies in the world in terms of management, governance, and leadership. Um, taking a role as the director of Australia and South Asia. Uh, we also form a company in um, Australia called Sistrack at Oki and myself. Um, we also co-founded a company in Canberra called Think to Impact. And uh, the two of us are still uh, adjunct professors at Adelaide Uni in, uh, in Australia, where we live. The talk is quite, uh, quite long, but uh, because I'm only given half an hour, so I try to, uh, some slides I try to skip and some I may focus more, depending on how we go. And uh, maybe um, I try to give maybe five or ten minutes at the end so I can have a discussion and, and questions. So we are here in the time that we have to manage everything that we have to manage under uncertainty and the complexity that we have to deal with. We are here today. We have been either ourselves as a family, as a company, or as an organization, a government. And we could either go on the red or on the blue lines. There are different paths, different ways of going. Um, they are not easy, as all the paths are bumpy. So it's important that uh, for managers, for leaders, to, find, to have a new way of thinking and so to look for different tools. And that's some of the tools I'm going to talk in my talk today. How many of you have been to Australia? Do you know uh, air rocks in the middle of Australia, the desert? Uluru. Yeah, Unuru. Yeah. The name is Unuru. Uh, last in December, Oki and I, uh, we, um, we went to Unuru Rock for a week. Uh, away from our wife, away from telephone, away from laptop, to uh, write our book. Because that was the only place that we were able to focus a whole week on writing without anything else. So that's what I took on on the road. Uh, this is quite in Australia, such a big country, and normally you have to, every 200k you find a spot that if you are in trouble, you can call. So that's quite interesting um, photo that I took. But I hope that I won't keep you here until tonight. I'm finished with, uh, within my time. Uh, Allowance. So in this talk, I would like to uh, briefly talk about system thinking. Some of you may already be familiar with system thinking. Some of you may be is, is new. How many of you are familiar with system thinking? Okay, so I'm, I'm in trouble with that. Um, but that is the basic that we have used to develop the um, framework that we have used in the last uh, seven years in, in so many different countries, uh, what we call the um, evolutionary learning laboratory framework, or in short, is E-Lab, which is um, an engine or basic that we have used to develop Team to Impact. Um, I won't have time, but I would love also to share with you some of the unique tools and approach of Mali, but um, of course I will have uh, 25 minutes, so I'd be happy to, to email to you some of the information if you would like to have. Okay, first I would like to uh, give a brief introduction to the system concept. Many of us, uh, because I know that the U.S., some from Indonesia, Philippines, Taiwan, uh, UK, Australia. Uh, when you were a child, you may have been told this story by your grandma, grandpa, or mom and dad about a sick blind man and an elephant. The story went that um, because they couldn't see the elephant, so they were trying to argue, each of them only touching one part of the elephant, person said, oh, it's not a rope. The elephant is not a rope because touching the tail of the elephant. The other person said, oh, it's like a fan because touching the ear of the elephant, and it goes on. They keep on arguing. Everyone said, I'm right. They're all right because they only know the path of truth. So the moral story is that it's important to have a holistic view of, of everything. In other words, it's important or you can't understand the system by 
just knowing the element. In a um, rust echoed term, the system is more than the sum of its parts. It is the product of their interactions. Um, the system is different with the connection because um, the connection is also composed of many parts, but normally they are just put together without having the interaction, without having the purpose. Uh, for example, a marriage, do you think that it's a connection or a system? The lady asked, hey honey, are we a connection or a system? And that's been odd. I hope that we are a system. We are not a connection. A company, is that a connection or a system? Different parts, different uh, divisions, different um, uh, levels. And hopefully if they are really connected, there will be a system. Sometimes they are not really connected. There would be a connection. I will skip this uh, for us. System thinking, because many of you said that you are quite familiar. For us, it is a new way of thinking to do, to understand, and to solve problems. Why do we need system thinking? Because we are, uh, it's quite different uh, perspective from the, the talk before, sorry, but I agree with you that we are living in the world that's quite dynamic at the moment, with so many different uh, things. For example, development of technology, climate change, social innovations, responsibilities, and many other things else. And they are all interconnected. So making this in this web is not easy. Do we normally make a good decisions, investment? Are we aware of the, what's called the unintended consequences of the decision that we make? Are we good in collaborations? Uh, quite good in economy, as you said, but for different departments, for different uh, players in the system, are we, are we good? Or normally, people would go for quick fixes because when they have problems, quick fix is easier, but normally it just only treat the same term. Or do we, as a society, urgently need a new way of thinking and different tools to deal with the problems that we have to face with? Um, I'll give you an example. I think every day when you, um, this is on TV, on newspaper, these are all different um, issues or problems Things about food safety, things about climate change, things about um, land use, water shortages, about um, human health, poverty, job losses. The problem is that normally these issues are treated or are solved in isolation. So different uh, areas, different departments taking care of them without thinking that actually they are all interconnected. So one actions or one thing, one issue, one policy, one error would have impact on many of the other factors or elements of the system as a whole. Uh, we call this is a tall net. Our society, our government, our, even at the university, we have different uh, faculty, different schools. In the government, we have different departments. It's important for each of them to, uh, to take care of their own jobs, but normally they are not really interconnected. In uh, other words, we are seen operate in a quite silo pattern. This is one example of um, I found city in, uh, in Vietnam, the project that we are kind of working with. Uh, they have different departments, agriculture, environment, tourism, investment planning, education, and further go on. And there is a um, 40 to 50 thick concrete wall between each department. Uh, and I'm not saying this only, not only in Haiphong, but I uh, think that that would be similar to many other places in the world. Each of them have their own plans, and they would not normally talk to each other. They try to do the best with the resource that they're given. 
So when we were invited to come in by the government Hải Phòng, they would like to, uh, to take that thick concrete walls away so different departments can, can talk with each other, can collaborate and share, so that they can come up with uh, what is called an uh, integrated systemic plan for the development of the whole, whole uh, city of Hải Phòng. And we think that that would be one of the first models in the world in terms of how they can, can break that silos for different departments within the government to work together. And we have written quite a lot of papers um, about the outcome of this project. Happy to share if you would like to, to uh, find out more information. We also have so many problems in uh, big projects, programs all over the world. It's about only 40% of the projects program all over the world are completed on time or on budget. And many, many of them underestimate the complexities that they have to deal with in the project program. Um, there's a lot of studies and research that follow that. Human factors are the main barriers to successes. Things like it's not easy to change the attitudes. There's lack of support from the leadership. And also there's not a good um, working culture in the corporate or in the company. So with all of that uh, disaster or failures showing that System thinking is not yet really embedded in the way that we make decisions, our leaders, our managers. There are so many other examples, and this is all real photo that um, I've taken during my different projects in the last few years. Uh, problem with clean water in the Mekong Delta, sanitation, living conditions. One, one example of the quick fix is that this um, South Korea government came in and they said that people here, they don't have um, uh, the problem with sanitation. And they, um, they gave the people a lot of uh, that flush toilet for people to use. And that's the quick fix because the people, they put it here and after doing their thing, the thing all the things just flushed out of the water. So that is quite a clear example of having a quick fix to solve the problem of sanitation there are the issue of problem with family planning, with health issue, and the need for education. So put it another way, or using a cartoon. This guy, he said, oh, I'm okay, because it looks safe to me, because he only focused on one particular thing. However, if you look at the bigger picture, he might not be safe anymore. Um, <clears throat> another, this is quite old, but uh, showing the, uh, what I said before about unintended consequences. The gentleman, because he saw that some of the block was on his way, so he, uh, the decision was to push them so that he can have a clear way. However, without thinking that not long, he might be flattened by the decision that he made. So this is, um, many of you have seen the movie Titanic, you know this is an iceberg, if you don't know what it is. So you may know me, I'm at the tip of the iceberg, but you have no idea who I am, because I'm much, much bigger. Um, and that is the basic philosophy of, of many things that we do. Because if people use the um, iceberg approach, normally when there's a symptom or event of the problem, not a real root cause, they would put money in to treat the symptom. And that happened with many, many, many different foundations and agencies in the past in terms of putting in money in to treat the symptoms, not really fighting the 
real cause of the problem. So using a system approach, it's important to look first the deepest layer of the iceberg, the mental models, the understanding, the opinion of all different peoples who are involved in the issue of the problem that need to be solved, from which you would be able to uh, come up with a um, systemic structure. What does the system that you have to deal with look like? And I'll give the example later. That would enable you to find the interactions between different components. And that allows you, or the people who are in charge of that problems or issues, to find long-term solutions to address the problem from which money can be invested or used to deal with the root cause of the problem. It could be poverty here, and also sometimes money also need to be used to mitigate the unintended consequences of the decisions. Um, let me give you another example of um, the leader thinking and system thinking. Uh, this is another project that we work on uh, Cat Ba Island, which is near Ha Long Bay in Vietnam. Many of you may heard about Ha Long Bay. Uh, people on Cat Ba Island is quite poor. And um, if you would ask an economist, I hope that none of you here are economists, how could you use tourism as a mechanism to, to help the people? He said that it's easy. You enhance tourism. You have more tourists, you have more jobs for people, they have more money, and people will be better off. So that is quite a little way of thinking, because the reality is that this is the system model of Katba. And you're right, it's still true. When you have more tourists, you have more jobs, people would be better off. However, there are so many different things that need to be taken into account. For example, the small trip that create waste pollution for the island, um, the issue with uh, immigration because the island people are not really well educated. They are not good enough for serving in the hotels, so people from inland have to, to be there and they bring their children to the, the island, had put a, a lot of pressure on um, the education system because there's not enough school for children. The issue to do with food safety, problem with um, available water because the island relies on underground water only, problem to do with the, um, the com competition between land for agriculture. And that is system thinking. It's still true here, but there are so many other things that need to be taken into account. And the application of system thinking has been uh, quite diverse in different fields, and I'm not going to uh, read out, but in business, in health, in human resource, is making in many, many other areas. We have used the system concept and different tools to develop what we call the e-learning lab. It is a seven steps uh, framework and that can be used to deal with complex problems in uh, basically any areas, any discipline. We have uh, applied in many places, and we have a lot of success so far. So how does it work? It always starts with people. That is the key of, of the, uh, the ELF framework. This is... Um, what we call challenge law thinking. Normally when people have an issue or problem or company, they would meet together, have a meeting to discuss and come up with maybe a solution and they would do it, implement, and then reflect and the circle might go on. So that's what we call the um, sort of old way of, of thinking and managing things. What we have developed is called the e-learning lab, which has seven steps. I'm going to go quickly to each of the steps. Step number one is having stakeholders, in other words, people who are having influence on that issue or problem, or people who could be 
affected by the problem issue all together to discuss, to come up with what are the issues, what are the barriers, what are the drivers, potential solutions for the problem. So that's step number one. That one is the project that we, um, we are working for the Great Foundation in, uh, in Ghana. And step number two is very important, is building capacity so that all the people could understand the concept, they could know, uh, not in details, but the basic of how they can come up with the system model. And this is one of the most important steps because we are researchers, we are not able to stay with them forever. Uh, having their capacity to do the thing with them, they do themselves, and whatever action that they come up with later on, they will take ownership of that and they do it, and that's very important in this step number two. Number three is uh, to develop a system model of, of that issue or problem that they have to deal with based on the information from step number one. Something like uh, this, uh, we call the cause group diagram. And I'm not going to read every uh, variable, but this is uh, the project that we work for rural women in Vietnam. And the main goal is to improve their quality of lives. Uh, after this, they come up with us, not we do it for them, but we work with them and they come up with this model. And they identify that there are three important uh, in system, we call navis points. In other words, there are places in system that you, if you can intervene, that can help you to achieve the goal. And they are improving their health, reduce their work pressures, and increase their income. So that is important in step number three and four to come up with a system model and identify where are the key places in system that you can intervene to achieve the goal. Step number five is um, we use, uh, some of you may be familiar with Bayesian BDF network. It is, um, we have used so many different systems or different models, but this is one of the best and we, we like it because it is really powerful. It allows you to combine both qualitative and quantitative data. A lot of system dynamic models only you, can, you have to use quantitative data. But a lot of different projects in social area, uh, there are many things that it's not easy to measure. In other words, uh, qualitative, like yes or no, people happy or not, and BBN or Bayesian BBN network allow you to combine both qualitative and quantitative. That's why we use quite a lot in different projects that we work so far. To, uh, to develop the BBN on how you can achieve each of the leverage points of the system. And it would, from different um, testing serial, they can come up different action plan from which people can implement. In this project, for example, things like building their capacity, forming uh, the cooperative groups, uh, diversify their products, etc. And they would do it, that is step number six. They would take the actions, systemic actions that they have come up with from different steps and they work and they reflect on what they have done well, what had not been working okay, and then the cigar may go on. And that they have a new level of learning at, at their local e-learning lab. I have to be quick now. We have established or set up many different e-labs in different places, in Japan, in Australia, in Vietnam, in uh, South China, where we study and so on, project in Cambodia. So each of these inner lab can share their, okay, provide lessons on a global platform, and they can also get a lesson back, learn from other inner lab. And that is when Think to Back came in. Because in the past, This is the um, evolution of Think to Impact. In the past, um, that's, that's Oki and me from Australia. Every year, we, for example, last year we, we had to go overseas uh, 14 times. And this year, only July now, after here, I'm going to Germany and Switzerland, only my seventh trip in the year. Uh, we think that it's, it's become impossible for us to travel so much. So that's why we have decided that we develop the um, online platform Think to Impact 
that would reduce a lot of our travel time, but also more efficient because um, uh, at the moment it is quite sort of in a local focus, but having the um, online platform would allow us to do it at a global scale. Also in terms of time, uh, so far we, we have to do one project, another project, but having the online platform would allow us to do many projects at the same time. Also in terms of uh, teaching in the past, normally we have to do face-to-face. -face. I come to teach here in Singapore twice a year and many other places. Uh, but having the online platform, that would allow us to do um, a lot of our teaching online as well. Also in terms of sharing in the past, as I said before, normally we have to rely on conference like what we're doing today for different e lab to come together. But having the uh, online platform that they can share everything online. And another important tool of, um, of Think to Impact is the tool called Impact Tracking. That would allow people to track the impact of the investment. So that, that's quite a new thing that we haven't put in. This is the anatomy of Think to Impact. So it has uh, four different um, components. The first thing is assess, in which all different um, lessons learned can be shared, different um, projects, everything can be put on assess. Engage is a place that people can do um, online workshop, take, going through all the seven steps of the e app that I uh, mentioned to you before. For example, in the project that we're working with, uh, South Australian Department of Health, they have to summon the expert from um, from the US, really good in that area. And now they are able to, to have the workshop online. At the same time, or at different time, people from the US can come in and they post a question on the online platform and people can do it. The Learn platform, as I said before, is a place that people can do the online courses uh, for certificate or just to, to know more about systems. And the impact platform or component is played to track the impact of uh, different investment, of different actions that you do in step number six of the e-learning lab. So basically this is all different seven steps of the e-learning lab that has been uh, built into the um, online platform called Think to Impact. And just three seconds for advertisement. That's the book that we went to Unuru Rock in September and has been uh, completed. Uh, consistent thinking for everyone, the journey from theory to make an impact. Um, we try our best because in the last seven, eight years, we have read a lot of books in, in system thinking and many of them, and we use a lot for our students in different places, but many students say that the, many of the books quite um, theory focused and it's not easy to understand. So what we have tried to do in this book is we use um, layman terms and uh, we hope that um, it has already been translated into Vietnamese and then uh, it's going to be translated into other uh, languages as well. Um, can be used for the taxi driver or the minister. Everyone would be able to understand um, the language in the book. So that basically is um, my talk. And that's my email address. I think using my um, old email address, um, I have new Malik email address, but uh, I don't know whether we have time, we may not have a time for, otherwise I can click on the link and I can take you to, uh, to the platform that you can have a quick look. If the internet is working. Uh, in the meantime, thank you so much for, for listening and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions or comments that you have. Thank you.